Kwati is the co-founder and head of intelligence at Steers um, from Nigeria. And uh, he holds a BSc and MSc in economics from the LSE. Are you the, you the economics guy? That's yes. smart. Hey? MSc from LSE. Sure. Very smart. Um, Michael will be talking to you today about STEERS. You've got 10 minutes. You can also do Q&A as much as you like. Um, so we'll, we'll give you till 3 p.m. and please take it away. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Um, so I take it you'll be helping me change my slides over there. Um, so just very quickly, like she said, my name is Michael Famarotti. Um, can we go on to the next slide? Actually, this, these are not the slides. But if we don't have them, I will just talk through because of time. All right, okay, awesome. Um, can everybody hear me or do I need to use the mic? Can you hear me? Yeah. All good? All right, awesome. Morning, thank you very much. Right. So my name is Michael Famarotti, Head of Intelligence at Stairs. What are Stairs? Very simply, Stairs is a data and insights company in Africa. We specialize in providing economic and industry research data and insights to institutions that are looking to invest in or operate in Africa. Today, I want to have a very quick conversation about one of our data solutions that is focused on market sizing and market validation for investors and operators in the consumer lending market as a case study. Right, so the first thing is, I presume that a number of people here have periodically had a need to validate, size, or identify the potential of a market in Africa. Now, okay. this isn't on. Sorry, it's not on. Okay, awesome, thank you. So, people here have had a periodic need to size, identify, or validate the opportunity for a market in Africa. What we found is, as people do that, they run into three problems. The first is that data is not available. There are not enough credible or trusted sources of industry or macro data in Africa. Even when that data is available, it's not available at the disaggregated level that people desire. The second issue is the data is not accurate. So put simply, market size numbers don't tally with the reality on ground. Part of the reason for this is the standard approaches lack the local context or nuance that should feed those numbers. Finally, even when the data is available and accurate, it's not actionable, meaning it cannot guide your decision making. Now, again, the reason for this is that it, it does not exist at the disaggregated level that is, that is required, but also traditional methods struggle to detangle the current opportunity in Africa and its potential. And those two numbers get to be mixed up quite often. So what we've done at Stairs is we've built a solution that helps people size not just the current market, but the potential based on normalized conditions. So what exactly does that mean? Take SME lending. You find that a number of countries to borrow from a financial institution, they use rather random thresholds for businesses. So those companies who fall below that then have to turn to semi-formal sources for credit. Now, our models help people identify those companies in that bucket that are most profitable and least risky to serve. So it captures the later demand, the latent demand, but in a cost-effective way. Now, I'm just gonna talk very quickly about what this looks like. So 
we combine both bottoms up and top down methods to generate, again, the market size, which is the current reality, and the market potential, which is what you can under normalized conditions. Our macroeconomic models estimate the market size. So first of all, we identify the factors that most drive the lending markets in each country. Then we train the models to estimate the optimal relationship between those factors and the lending. That way, we're able to then generate not just the current market size, but forecasts of the markets in different countries. Moving on to the micro model, what we do essentially is we rely on statistic nationally representative surveys and we identify the cohort of borrowers that are formal, i.e. they borrow from banks. Sorry, can you just go a few slides ahead? I think one, one more. Yeah, thank you. So we, for our micro model, we identify the cohorts of borrowers that are formal. And then we identify the cohorts that are semi-formal. So semi-formal here could be that you rely on loans from your workplace, not a bank. Now, our micro model is built on the cohort of four or formal borrowers where we're essentially trying to identify the factors that most drive that. That model is then applied on the semi-formal cohort to identify the portion of that population that has the highest likelihood of being a formal borrower. Can you go on to the next slide, please? No, forward. Thank you. Next one. Now, the result of this is as follows, right? On one hand, you have the market that is generated by looking at nationally, at, at statistics from the national databases, and that's black. Now, that gives you an estimate of the current market size for lending in country X. The gray bars represent the additional potential as the models have identified. The variances in the gray bars represent different scenarios. So depending on the thresholds that you are willing to use to determine the likelihood of people moving from the informal to to the formal markets, that then determines the final size of the market potential that you can capture. Can you go on to the next slide, please? Okay, all right. And now, just to close, because the models are also built bottoms up, one value prop is the estimates and forecast, but we're also able to identify by the drivers of the markets in different countries. So for example, these are some example variables in the macro model and these are the quantities that represent how they affect market size in different countries. Now this means that in the event of a policy shock, say the minimum for countries, you are able to identify and estimate impact on markets in different countries. Can you go on to the next slide, please? Likewise, for the micro model, because it's built bottoms up again, we're able to identify the precise factors that drive formality. So here's an interesting case study of how this would work. 
So a digital lender in Kenya is looking to expand its loan portfolio to other consumers. All right. Thank you.